Good morning, welcome to our homestead. Right now in Texas, we are in the midst of a drought. We've seen rain for two days over the last 60 days. So today I'm gonna to talk about the best fruit trees and vegetables that we have growing that are very drought resistant. Let's talk about it. And one of the best fruit trees or fruit bushes in my case that's drought resistant is a fig. Figs are known for growing in dry, arid areas of the world like the Middle East. And they do well here. Even though we do have a lot of rain, usually in the spring, we do get serious droughts here in the summertime. And this thing has thrived. It has not affected the fruit at all. Now the reason figs survive well is because they have a deep root system. And even in the winter, they will die back a bit at the top and then come up from the roots in the springtime. So their root system is really strong. And with most of the plants that I'm going to mention today, deep roots is the key. Any fruit or vegetable that has a really shallow root system is not going to do well in a drought situation. And this Texas Everbearing Fig is continuing to put out new figs, and we have harvested a lot off of it so far without any rain. So the second tree I want to talk about, and is probably the best in the world, if it's not, let me know in the comment section below, but it is extremely drought resistant. It's actually disease resistant and pest resistant. It's an all around amazing tree every single one of you needs to have on their property, and that is a jujube tree. So I have not put one drop of water on this tree and it is thriving. I never ever watered the thing. I think I watered it when I initially planted it and that was it because I knew how drought resistant it was. So if you live in an area that you're struggling with growing any fruit tree and getting any fruit out of it, this is for you. And I forgot to mention, these are huge producers. This thing is only three years old and it is absolutely loaded. It's about 15 feet tall, and there is so much fruit on each branch, it's just weighing it down a ton. Here's the third one that you need on your homestead right now, and that's grapes. Now we have two different types of grapes. These are muscadine grapes, which are a southern style grape. They don't grow in clusters, and they have a really thick skin and big seeds, but they are super high in sugar content, and they are just an amazing, amazing plant to have. And the nice thing about them is if you are starting your homestead, they produce quickly. So these started producing in only about three years. And grapes are notorious for not liking water at all. They grow this amazing fruit by going very deep with their root system. And if they get too much water, they're not going to perform well. So they do much, much better in a drier, more arid climate. However, these southern style muscadine grapes can take more water than your traditional types of grapes. So there are some wild varieties of these, but these are cultivated muscadine grapes, and I recommend getting those. The wild ones can be a little bit sour. The sugar content on these, this is the Carlos variety, this beautiful bronze color right here. The sugar content on these is super high and they're super good. So I wanna mention really quick, an additional feature of muscadine grapes, which I think would benefit all of you. And that is they put out two crops per year. So you can see my main early crop under here and I'm harvesting these right now as we speak. But out here on the shoots that came out this year, we've got new grapes and these will be ready in October. So it will pretty much be a continuous harvest from now through October, which is really nice. These are our black Spanish grapes. They are only two years old and they gave us a really nice crop this year. If you follow us on Instagram or you've seen the pictures on the community page, you'd see the, you've seen those beautiful black deep purple grapes. They are amazing. They're super sweet and no problem with the drought at all. Here's another great one. This is a persimmon. We have not gotten any fruit off of this one yet, but persimmons are very drought resistant. Here's another tree I have not gotten fruit off of yet, and this is one of my Dorset golden apples. It's got the proper amount of chill hours for zone 8B down here in the south, but it is it seems to be thriving. Although it's hard to tell sometimes if a fruit tree does not have fruit on it because if a fruit tree does get too dry and it's not drought resistant, it will drop its fruit. This one, like I said, hasn't fruited, but it seems to be doing well without any water. 
So you can also find a lot of other information out there on drought resistant fruit trees, on websites that are for the extension offices for colleges that have uh, ag and natural resource departments. Let's go to the next one. And that's an apricot. Apricots are one of the few stone fruits that do do well without a lot of water. And this one is thriving without much water at all. Here's one I'm very excited to talk about because I've got fruit on it right now and it's doing great and that's an Asian pear. Asian pear trees are fairly drought resistant. They're not super drought resistant like a fig, a grape, or a jujube, but they do really well without much water at all. Now one tree that I plan on getting hopefully this year is a loquat tree. It is a Japanese fruit, I believe, and it's got small orangish colored fruits on it and they are supposed to be delicious. I've never had one. But I've heard that the properties of this tree make it a good tree for this area, including drought resistance. Now probably world famous for being drought resistant is the olive tree. However, in this area of Texas, it's really not recommended and olive trees don't really grow that well. Why? Because it's too humid. Olive trees need really dry, arid air to be able to grow really well. And out in West Texas, they do grow well, not here in East Texas. So before I talk about the crops that we have in the garden that are doing really well in this drought and are fairly drought resistant, I wanna talk about watering. Whatever fruit tree or crop that you can water deeply and infrequently, is going to be your best drought resistant crop. If you have to water it frequently and you're just watering those first top few inches of soil, those aren't gonna survive very well at all. So things like lettuces don't do well in drought at all because their root systems are only a few inches deep. But something like Swiss chard do very well because they have a very deep root system. And a unique thing about Swiss chard is that it's a perennial. So you can keep a chard plant around for an incredibly long period of time. If you're looking for a grain that is drought resistant where you're not buying some GMO uh, wheat that's drought resistant, amaranth is naturally drought resistant. It's a great grain. If you haven't eaten it before, it's very good. And as you can see, it's growing with no problem without much water at all. Now this one behind me, everybody should plant because it's a superfood. This is the sweet potato. Sweet potatoes put down deep, long roots everywhere and obviously you can eat them. But what a lot of people don't know too is that you can eat the leaves from the sweet potato plant. They taste like spinach, they're very tender and they're high in vitamin C. I don't know why anybody would not grow these. Now behind me in this big patch back here is one that many people might think doesn't have much drought resistance at all because of the fruit, and that is a melon. But melons do do well in drought, and they have very deep roots, again, that bring up that moisture for all the melons. Now, it's been super dry here, and I have a ton of watermelons this year. And I've also had more cantaloupe and sugar kiss melons than I've ever had before. Okay, now here's what I'm gonna debate a little bit about, and that's tomatoes. Tomatoes have very deep roots. However, they, mine don't seem to do well with this drought situation. I've had to water them quite frequently. Now that could be because of the variety, although I do have romas, which are listed as being very drought resistant. They haven't done well with a lack of water. So. I don't know where everybody is with their tomatoes. Let me know in the comment section below. Now, if you want some leafy greens that are drought resistant, mustards and collards are your two best bets. They have very deep root systems and they do well in this heat also down here in the south. And I don't have any planted this year, but chickpeas, if you're looking for a legume that does really well in the drought conditions or in a low uh, moisture condition, that's chickpeas. They usually grow in a rocky, arid type of area, a rocky soil in an arid area. They'll do well in the drought. Now there are probably others that you know about, and if you want to tell us about them, leave us a comment in the comments section below. I'll list the ones that we've talked about in our description below the video. Now in these tough times when many of us are going to have to start growing our own food, having information like drought resistant vegetables or things like that is important. 
you're gonna have to do your research for your area and your environmental conditions. And those conditions might change, right? So we haven't had a drought here in Texas in 11 years. But having that knowledge in the back of your mind as to what to plant in a situation like this is super important. Now go click on this video right here which shows you how we initially built our Back to Eden style garden. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.